welcome to our second edition of King's Vegetarian Food Manufacturing Cooking from our website recipes. Today we are going to do a vegetarian uh, soy breast uh, right here. It is uh, vegetarian because it does have some milk product and egg white powder in it. Uh, still very healthy, uh, no cholesterol, very high in protein, some calcium, good iron. We're going to do some fresh vegetables to go with it. So those we're going to uh, blanch in water like we did in our last episode and fry them up just a little bit, our seasonal vegetables. We've got some crushed tomatoes over here and we're going to make ourselves a nice Italian tomato sauce. I prefer to use the crushed tomatoes because they're easy to work with and we can just dilute as opposed to blending and going through the whole process. And what I've also got started already, got a little bit heavy on this one, I've got some Yukon Gold potatoes for mashed potatoes. They're going to be creamy herb whipped potatoes to go with it. So at the end, we're going to present to you a pan seared soy breast with grilled vegetables, herb mashed potatoes and Italian tomato sauce. So let's get right into it. Our potatoes, I've taken uh, these nice wonderful seasonal Yukon Gold potatoes here. Just give them a bit of a peel, wash. I've cut them probably about a couple of inches big and lightly salted water. They only cooked for about 12 minutes. You don't want to make your potatoes too uh, overcooked. I like a little too thin much. film of extra virgin olive oil on top of my tomato sauce. So I'm going to make us about 800 mils of tomato sauce today. So that's about one ounce of extra virgin olive oil. So this is what we've got for our tomato crushed here, you can see. Uh, no flavor whatsoever. I don't okay. like buying the ones with it. I got the dry oregano because you never know how easy it is to find these fresh herbs all year round. So if you can make a good flavor out of a dry herb, imagine what you can do with a fresh one. So I've got here probably about a quarter teaspoon of each basil and oregano. Okay, get a bit of temperature on it, right? Then I'm gonna take my tomatoes, fresh tomatoes here. I'm gonna put them in. It's gonna bubble and spit a little bit. I'm gonna turn this down. Okay. It's important that we get a good temperature on it before we add the tomatoes because the last thing you want to do is not get a good temperature on your oil and your herbs and you don't release the flavor. What you're trying to do is release the oil from the dry herbs. That's what's gonna give flavor to your uh, tomatoes. Just adding them in cold I think you'll find it takes quite a long talking maybe a quarter teaspoon here. Again, I'm using this no salt product. It's a low or no sodium product. It does have a milder salt flavor. So because it's got a milder salt flavor, don't go crazy overusing because it's still not that healthy to use too much of it. My white pepper again, uh, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon in there. And I'm gonna give it a bit of a stir. Quite rich and thick at the moment. I'm gonna wind up probably adding a little bit of water to it at the end, thin it out a little bit. Secret ingredient in my Italian tomato sauce, balsamic vinegar. I love cooking with this dark balsamic vinegar. As long as you get a, a good one that's got a little bit of acidity to do it, not too much sweetness. And I like the dark one because the dark adds a little bit of robust color to your sauce at the end. If you keep using the white one, I think you'll find that you dilute the color as opposed to adding body richness to it. And the dark one has just a wonderful bacon. And it's a wonderful alternative to like MSG. It's a wonderful alternative to those vegetarian bouillon cubes. There's nothing in here but just mushrooms. It's very low sodium and there's pretty much nothing in there but um, well, dry shiitake mushrooms. So that was about a teaspoon. Now the reason I went a little bit heavier on this mushroom powder, you can see how thick the sauce is. I'm going to wind up thinning this out just oh. a little bit. Let's have a look at our potatoes here. How to know if the potatoes cook properly? Let's fetch one and see. A, I've cut them all about the same size. Very important. Don't go just randomly cutting them. They'll cook at different times. See, my fork goes in. It takes me just a bit of effort. The potato doesn't fall apart, but you see it cracks. That's exactly what you want. You want your potato to have a bit of resistance, but you also not want it to fall apart as you put your fork through it. So I'm just gonna go over to this bowl over here. I'm gonna drain it. Get all this water out of it. I don't need this water. I just put it on top of this cloth to guard the table from the hot water. Okay, I'm not going to use this potato water for anything afterwards. I could use it. I could definitely use it into my tomato stock. Now, how to make sure I don't get gummy potatoes. Even if I've cooked my potatoes properly, how do I know that I'm not going to wind up with a terrible gummy flavor? 
So what I gotta do now, is I need to take my potatoes and get that moisture out of it. So the best way to do it, put them back on the heat when I've drained it out, and fry it up a little bit. What I'm looking for, to be perfectly clear, is a bit of starch building on the bottom of this pot. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not burning or anything. Can you see the starchy white coating on the potatoes that's starting to develop? That's a sign of the water coming out. If I don't get that water out, it's going into my flavor of my uh, potatoes, and I don't really want that. So better that I just... Now we're going to get our mixture ready for our mashed potatoes. So we're going to use soy milk to keep it vegan today. Even though our, uh, our soy breast isn't vegan, it's okay. The reason we're going to do this vegan is because we can definitely use this any time you want on any other dish. And then I've got this uh, lactose-free vegan margarine. I like the texture of this one better than uh, a lot of this uh, vegan butters. And it's a pretty good healthy one. Very little uh, fat. So I put a good couple of tablespoons in there. To find the tarragon will balance with the uh, basil and the parsley, not too much. If you can get the season of uh, uh, fresh tarragon, please use fresh tarragon instead. Okay, so you see the texture we've got going on now? It's nice and soft, it's not gummy. Nice and creamy, so uh, it's not taking any effort. I don't see any lumps in there. If you want to get this absolutely as smooth as possible, I recommend you take a Cuisinart and uh, run it through. But if you use a Cuisinart to run it through, be very careful. The gluten in the potato will overdevelop in a very hurry and you'll wind up with gum again. So you definitely want to be careful. Um, how much you whip it into freezing it. Okay, so I've got a nice creaminess going on, and I am pretty happy with that. So, I'll pull that down. Now, I can't use these as they're really, really, really hot, but I want to keep them warm for the moment, so that when I do go to use them, I'm ready to go, and I don't have to worry about waiting, because it's too hot, it's gonna burst the seam on the bag. I'm just gonna place this down here for the moment. Okay, so we're coming back over here now. I'm going to put my water on top of my vegetables. I left them to last because they're very quick to take care of. Let's go back and look at our simmering tomato sauce now. Doesn't that look nice? It's got a good texture. It's simmered out. It thinned out a little bit from adding the potato water. So I've got about a texture that I like now. The texture I like is about coating of the back of the spoon. See? It falls off, but it's still not too rich. What a good little flavor that is. I can really taste the balsamic and the basil. Okay, I'm going to put a pitch more salt in there. Salt is according to how your preference is and your guess. Um, you don't have to uh, go too salty. Depends on how it is. Some people eat heavier salt. Some people eat lighter salt. So be aware of that. Okay, so my vegetables, as I said earlier, are already in front of us, ready to go here. So you can see my carrots are already pre-done. I've already blanched them and cut them to save a bit of time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by frying up, by boiling up my uh, carrot and my, or my beans and my asparagus, sorry. They'll go very quickly, maybe 30, 40 seconds. And then I'll count down about 10 seconds, add my broccoli. Greens together is a good thing. They take about equal amounts of time to, uh, to boil up and um, there's no flavor transfer because they're all green dark vegetables so it's not like I've got a cauliflower or a carrot in there. So we're not going to go very long on this. We're going to go maybe about uh, maybe 30-40 seconds. I'm heating up another pan over here. I'm going to put some regular uh, veg oil in this one and I'm going to use this one to uh, chop them in the ice water. My the ice water stops the cooking process immediately and you don't have to worry about overcooking them because what we're doing here is we're going pretty much right to the frying stage so we don't have to worry about cooling it down because there's not going to be any uh, intermission of cooking okay so I've got another pan ready to go here my mushrooms are going to be going in here next we're only going to do one portion here okay and I haven't put any salt or pepper in the end I want to get a bit of color on my mushrooms first before I go and uh, seasoning too heavily so it's going to go basically in order of cooking time. So my mushrooms are first. 
my carrots will be second, and my green vegetables, as I said, are third. And as soon as I get my vegetables done, I'm going to sear off my uh, soy chicken breast in here. So I want to keep the flavor of the vegetables together with everything else. I don't want to lose the flavor. I don't want to run and wash everything out and start again because then I've lost the effect of my vegetables. I'm going to take a bit of dry basil, give it a bit of flavor. And it doesn't add any, uh, any uh, cholesterol or anything else to my dish. It just gives a bit of flavor to my uh, vegetables. I'm going to put a bit of pepper. I don't generally season the salt at the beginning because I want to wait and see how it's going with my uh, mushrooms first because I find that by adding the salt at the beginning I'm just kind of taking all the moisture out of everything and then you can see the liquid coming out of my mushrooms as opposed to a frying pan. Okay, I've started my carrots. I just want a bit of a coating on my carrots so that I can get a bit of a caramel. Not brown brown but light golden brown. That should happen about the same time as my mushrooms get a bit of a coating on. The last thing I would add is my broccoli. Because I don't want to fry my broccoli to that, so I just want to, I just want to warm it up. So I'm going to take it off the heat for a second, give it a bit of a cloth. You can see the nice basil in there. A little bit of salt coming in now that I'm almost done. It's really fast. Once you've blanched your vegetables, it's so fast. We're talking 30 seconds in the frying pan. If I go too far in the frying pan, all I'm really doing is browning my vegetables. And once I brown them, the color comes out almost immediately. I don't want to do that. I don't want my gray vegetables. I want to keep that wonderful, nice green color that we worked so hard to get. Okay. There we go. There's our vegetables. Got a nice color happening there. Maybe just a few more seconds. Okay. I'm going to make it a little plate over here. So. I'm going to turn it off. That's just that fast, you see? My mushrooms, they're just starting to get a little bit of a, a like a shrivel on them from the cooking process. If I cook them too much longer, what's going to happen is they're going to start leaking out all of their moisture. Okay, I can definitely smell the basil. I can definitely smell the pepper cooking here. There is a bit of color on my beans, you can see it here. It's just nice. Okay. And my asparagus has just a trace of color on it. Which is exactly what I want. So what I want to do now is I want to keep my vegetables warm as I work on my chicken breast. Okay, I'm just going to place these over here. Then I want to get my chicken breast warm. Okay. I don't need much oil. I'm not cooking the chicken breast. I'm actually just seasoning it and searing it. By the time I get a nice color sear on this soy breast, Basically, I can expect that it's already heated all the way through. I generally tend to not season salt on the vegetarian products because I do find that there is already salt in the product. So, if I salt every single aspect of the dish, uh, it would probably have a more profound taste, but then again, profound taste comes with extra salt, and if you're on a low sodium diet, you do have to be a little bit careful with how much salt you're cooking with. So, all I did is put a bit of white pepper on it. Okay, and then as soon as I get a bit of color on this, so now my sauce is ready, my potatoes, <coughs> my potatoes are ready, excuse me, and my vegetables are ready. So you can see all I'm trying to do is get a bit of color on here. I got my color happening pretty good. If I touch it, yeah, I've definitely got a good temperature on it. That's just color. I'm going to turn this off now. The vegetarian products you're going to find are very, very quick to uh, heat up to. There's nothing to cook. You're just going to be browning it. Now I want to show you this piping bag. This is a regular standard 16 inch uh, piping bag you can find at many grocery store retailers or maybe a, uh, an arts and craft shop. You want to try to get a larger bag because it's got a larger tip. Whenever you're decorating anything, not just cooking, you'll find that by having the smaller bag, the smaller tip, A, you get less in it and B, it doesn't quite look as nice because it's got such a fine tip. And you can do just the same uh, work with the larger tip. So. You want to put your hand in there and fold it down slightly. You need to have a good two inches on the outside folded over so you've got something to hold on to. You can't fill it up more than about two thirds of the way. But because we're only doing one plate, we really don't need much more than just a couple of spoonfuls. So let's come over here and grab our mashed potatoes that we kept warm. Okay. So they're still warm. They're not really boiling hot like they were at the beginning. They have cooled down a little bit. but. There's that fine line between how cold should my potatoes be and uh, how hot till they break the bag. <laughs> so, 
Just kind of gently tap them down the bag. You're going to find you got an air pocket. Just squeeze it out. There you go. See my potatoes are coming out. You need two hands on the piping bag. Top hand is going to squeeze and basically give stability. Second hand is going to add extra pressure because you can't just squeeze from the top because you're going to wind up bursting the bag. And you want to give a little bit of guidance to your piping bag. Otherwise, you basically wind up not sure where you're going if you've got a one hand. I mean, if you've piped a lot in your life and you're very comfortable with the piping bag, that's perfect. If not, use two hands. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how it works. I like to do rosettes. They have an elegant, old-fashioned appeal. You can do one rosette, two rosettes, different sizes. It's entirely up to you and your guess. So if I was going to do rosette, I'm going to basically go in a circular motion, rising the bag, and it's almost like having a soft serve ice cream cone. That's exactly what I'm looking for with the tip on the top. So I start from the bottom, bigger circle, smaller as I go up, and there we go. There's a small rosette. And that small rosette looks very dainty on the plate. Sometimes uh, you get a very large rosette and it can look a little bit too much on the plate, too much potato. Two smaller potatoes is much nicer sometimes than a large one. I can do just about anything with that potato as well. If I want to be extra fancy, I can go get some, uh, keeping it vegan of course, I can get some soy cheese, sprinkle it on top, bake it in the oven for about two or three minutes, maybe give it a brush with some of the vegan margarine. And what you find is a wonderful uh, crisp outer coating, like a baked potato, uh, like a stuffed potato. That's another amazing thing I can do. So what I might just do is take a pan, uh, grease the bottom with some veggie oil, and uh, pipe it up like I just did. Maybe about uh, seven, eight minutes in about uh, 400 degrees uh, Fahrenheit oven. Just to get a bit of a golden color, cheese or no cheese. And then just scoop it up with the spatula and lay it down on my plate. Very, very nice, different approach. Uh, tastes very nice. It gives that different texture, right? Because then it has a crunch on the outside, soft on the inside. So it's entirely up to you what you're looking for. So I'm going to put everything on the plate now. I always build from the back of the plate forward. So I'm going to start on the back corner and work my way this way. Because if I work from the middle, I don't really know where I'm going. And i got a lot of food to put on the plate. I've got my soy breast, I've got my vegetables, my sauce, and my potatoes. So I'm going to start with a couple of small rosettes of potato here, right in the upper corner. So it's really not too much. It's only about three ounces of potato. So it's not like we're overdoing the volume of it. Next thing I want to do is go put my vegetables on. And my vegetables, I want to try to keep a bit of separation between all my colors. Because it is kind of green. Uh, it is season for green vegetables. I'll put my carrot on next. There we go. I like to show the ends of the beans facing out because that way I can uh, show you that it was a nice fresh bean. Okay. And I might just put my mushrooms here. You can see mushrooms have a wonderful color. It's not, uh, it's not leaking at all its moisture. So that's the benefit of having a hot pan. If your pan's not hot enough, Really all you're going to do is wind up uh, letting all the moisture off of it. Again, I've got my broccoli. Just put it up there. And I've got my soy breast. Now you can see the nice kind of golden color on that. I'm just going to put that down like that. I'm going to use it to cover up all the ends of all my vegetables. That's the nice thing about building a plate. You can build it in a way to hide everything. Now you can't see anything I might have made of this dish The last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here with my sauce. Okay. Now the sauce can't be too thick. It's going to sit up and it's got to be thin enough. And it's got to be thick enough that it does stand up a little bit. I don't want to cover up my nice color on my plate. Uh, I, we took a lot of effort to getting a nice golden color. There we go. Keep in mind, there's mashed potatoes on this dish, so I definitely want to have enough sauce that I can dip my potatoes in. Everybody loves to dip their potatoes into some kind of a sauce. And just going to dip into my little parsley bunch here and get myself a nice spray of parsley. And here we go. There we go. So, that didn't take too long at all. So what we've got now is a wonderful little uh, entree plate, suitable for any evening, be it family, be it friends, be it a celebration event. 
We're talking 20 minutes maximum. We built a sauce, we seared our soy breast, we blanched our vegetables, we cleaned them, we fried, we made mashed potatoes. And um, again, all these recipes are on our website. Full nutrition, they're all done by section. So if you just wanted to make the mashed potatoes, you could pull out the mashed potatoes and you could basically print that recipe. You can see the nutrition. Very happy that you joined us today. I thank you for taking time to watch us how we made this dish. I hope you have luck and doing it on your own and make it your own dish, change it up, find the seasonal vegetables and uh, have a great day and I hope you join us for our next class where we'll present another offering of a nice wonderful appetizer platter. Thank you so much. Have a great day.